Once your pinch pot has been stored for one night upside down on the wear board, it should be leather hard, which this is. This is the consistency of cheddar cheese and it's actually ready to start getting cleaned. Now whether or not you were able to rib yours on the first day or you didn't rib it and it looks lumpy, you are fine. You can do the cleaning with it. The only reason I have people rib it um, on the first day is it makes this step a little bit easier. I'm going to use the messier cup to clean because I want to show you something that requires a little bit more cleaning. Now the tools that we're going to use to clean are, um, I'm using some Cheryl uh, Mud Tools shredders. Uh, this is a rasp-like instrument and it uh, works very similar to a cheese grater. It, the steel blade has um, sharpened um, like blades that are sharpened from one direction, not the other. So they only work in a one directional pull. Um, get some of that water off of there. These have replaceable blades that you can buy and you can replace them. I love these for working in class. You could also use a Sureform tool. Um, I think Sureforms are made by Stanley. It's the same concept. Um, I, the mud tools are made specifically for uh, potters who might be uh, using them in clay. Um, this other uh, shredder has an angle where it is scooped side to side, it's bent side to side. It has nice little cutters on the very edge of the tool, whereas this one, being completely flat, the, the big difference is going to be if I wanted to do it on the inside, I would use this one that is bent uh, with that um, nice angle that will fit in there. Now, when you are going to be working on the outside. The first thing that I would do is make sure that you have a bottom so it's not gonna be real wobbly. So that's good, I'm fine. The next thing that I want to do is I want to mark the edge level. Now, when you mark the edge level, you really wanna find where the lowest spot is. So it's either here or here. Um, I could put my eyes down level with it and look across and it looks like this one's lower. Now, there's a little trick to marking a nice level line that I recommend. If you were to take a little tool, so I'm gonna use a wooden knife, and I'm going to take a needle tool, and I'm holding it very firmly, if you can see this. I have the needle tool pressed against the wooden knife. I have it sticking out about a half an inch. Yeah, I mean, you could have it stick out farther, like an inch if you want, but I am very, very, very securely holding it against the wooden knife. Okay, and if I lock this in place, I can then rotate the cup so the needle tool stays stationary. And that is a nice little way to make a horizontal line. Okay, so there we go. Now, in the past, I have told students that you could take a knife and trim that off, and that is, that is possible. But my students struggle with cutting with a knife evenly. For some reason, they tend to gouge it a little bit. So we're just gonna skip over the knife for this demonstration, and I instead am going to use the Sureform Shredder. I'm going to take this and make sure that it's in the direction where it's going to cut. So I like to use the pulling action, and I'm going to pull it until I'm right down to the line that I drew. If you are trying to do it in the wrong direction, like if you have it turned around and you're doing it, it's just going to kind of gum up and make a mess. Um, occasionally I have a student who's like, this does not work. And I go over and I just reverse the tool and it works for them and they laugh. So um, I'm going to level it first and get your eyes down uh, level with it and make sure that, yep, that looks pretty good. Okay. Now, the next step is I am going to go ahead and kind of look at the outside of the rim and I am going to, I, I'm putting my head above this so I'm looking straight down on it and I want to try to get this outside looking nice and round. So if I can just get the outside nice and round I can match 
the inside to be the same roundness. Okay, so the exterior looks nice and round. The inside, not so much yet. Okay, and I, whenever I get debris on the turntable, I do uh, clean it off. And I am working on a paper towel just to keep the turntable a little cleaner. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take some off on the inside edge. Um, note where the thinnest part of the wall is. So the thinnest part is right here. I'm just going to draw a line. You do not have to draw this line. I'm just doing this visually so you can understand what I'm about to do. My goal is to take the thickness of the wall down so it pretty much looks uniform around there. So you can see the way that I have that line drawn. So there are two ways that you could thin this out. You could use a shredder or you could use one of the uh, mud tools, uh, little metal scrapers, it's a stainless steel scraper. If your pot is really clean, like it, you already ribbed it, I wouldn't use the shredder on it, just use the rib. So in the case of this, I'm gonna just start with the shredder just to show you. Uh, when you start with the shredder, don't use more than like an inch or so because you don't wanna stick it down in there the full depth. You will jab the inside and you'll, you'll have kind of a, a mess down there. I am just going to use like an inch and I'm going to pull the shredder diagonally as I'm pulling it toward me. Okay, that's kind of key. I'm not just going straight up and down. When you go straight up and down, it kind of makes notches. And if your pot is a little on the sticky side, you could always give it a second day to dry. Mine is a little stickier than I would normally like this to be. So I am going to try to bring it down into, uh, to an even thickness all the way around. Okay, so I still have a little ways to go, but that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to switch to the rib or the metal scraper to do the remainder of that. And for this, when you are using the scraper, use it like we did the yellow rib before. I put my hand on the opposite side of the wall. You want to support and protect the wall as you're doing this. Now, if you get a, a little accumulation, like I have some clay that's accumulating at the corner, I will just carefully scrape that down. Oh, and I did, didn't mention, but every time I'm scraping and I get this clay on the rib, clean that off because the clay on the rib, that buildup will kind of throw you off. So you want to clean that off. So I'm trying to go for a thinner edge of this pot, somewhere between a quarter of an inch and maybe even an eighth. But a little bit less than a quarter is probably pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and scrape this, and then I'll show you what I've got. If you happen to have issue of trying to reach down in the bottom with a rib and you can't quite do it, um, I wanted to show you how you could use one of these tools, uh, which is a uh, wooden knife, the rounded end of a wooden knife. You could take this wooden knife and just scrape gently in small areas. And basically you're using it almost like it's a little rib that helps uh, when you have uh, difficult areas to reach. Um, or you could also use the loop tool just by gently sculpting away if you happen to have dents. Again, if you can't quite reach down in there with a rib, uh, you are welcome to try that technique. Um, especially if you have like a really narrow bottom like this. This particular cup has a really narrow bottom and it's really hard to get down in there. Um, and uh, when we go to clean it and we do a sponge anyway, those tiny little tool marks, they would not show up. All right, that's looking pretty good with the stainless steel scraper. Now, whenever you are sure forming, the stainless steel scraper is the best tool to get rid of the sure form marks. 
after you've done the stainless steel scraper, then you can go to a slightly softer one. I prefer to go to the yellow rib. Again, link in the video description. The yellow rib provides a little bit of a flex to it, but yet it will also scrape but it also just more or less compresses as well. So it's not removing as much as the stainless steel one did, but it is compressing it nicely. And after the yellow rib, when I pretty much have, you know, the Surefor marks are gone on the inside because I used the stainless steel, then I did yellow, then I'm gonna go to red and the red is a really nice kind of finishing, um, smoothing surface at the very end. Now, if you have marks in the bottom, don't worry about those so much. I'm gonna show you how we'll take care of those in a minute. Okay, now I'm gonna concentrate on the outside. And I should clarify, it does not matter if you do the inside first or the outside first. I just happen to pick this order. Now the outside, I have already rounded, so now I need to work on the rest of it. So for that, I'm going to flip it, since I already did the upper edge, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the denting that I have on here. And again, pay attention to which direction the sure form's going to cut. Now when you do this, if you use nice kind of long strokes that go around the pot, it helps to keep the form round overlap the strokes. You can make strokes go up and down, side to side, or diagonally. But I'm going to try to get the denting out of here and make, again, the bottom look like it's round in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna clean this off. You want to be careful about setting it in loose debris. If you set it in debris, it will really get stuck to it. Now I'm going to flip and I'm going to kind of ease this transition between where I initially sure formed it and where I did down here. I want to just make sure that this looks smooth and even without flat spots, without dents. And you can see one advantage to ribbing on the first day when you first make it is you have a little less sure forming to do. When you don't rib at the beginning, then you usually have dents that you have to sure form to get down to the level of dents. And I have one more, like a flat spot right there. I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, so that's looking pretty good and uniform. Now, remember the next tool to get rid of the Sureform marks is the stainless steel scraper. I'm going to stand and work on that. After doing a round of side to side, I'm going to try some that are a little bit more diagonal to help get rid of the Sureform marks. Put your hand on the inside when you're working on it upright to make sure that you're supporting the wall. When you have a little bit of debris that's stuck on there like that, just make sure your rib is clean and that will remove it. After the stainless steel, then I can do this. And don't forget, after the yellow, you could come in there with red if you'd like it super smooth. Now, the one additional thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to round the edge so it doesn't have a square shape here. 
So there are a few different ways that you could do this. One that I would recommend is just start off by taking the corner off on the outside with the sure form. On the inside, I'm going to use a little bit more control by using the rib to take off some of that corner edge. But there is another tool that I want to show you I haven't shown you yet. And that is to use a notched card. I have another video on how I made these and a few other videos where I utilize them. But a, a notched plastic card is kind of a nice way where you can put an edge which will be of an even thickness. You just kind of pull it around. Now the key is you have to be gentle with this. Some of my students struggle and they have a bit of difficulty with this. So you could, again, just completely hand sculpt it. So I'll just do this one half with the notched rib, and then I'll do the other half with the sculpting rib. Now when you use the notched rib, sometimes it does create a line like that. So then I need to go back in there and shave off the, the line. I need to make sure that it looks clean. And here I'm just using the ribs to smooth it a little more. I did want to show you uh, what you could do if you ever have difficulty in getting yours to sit without rocking. If it rocks quite a bit, that could indicate that maybe your bottom is bumping out, that it's a little bit convex. If that is the case, you could create a small little dimple in the middle. And that dimple is very, very shallow. It is enough to kind of give it a little bit of a foot ring on the outside so it will not be touching in the center of this little dimple, but it will be sitting on the outer part. Um, as I said, it'll be more like a foot ring. So just be careful, uh, students, if you do this, uh, don't be over aggressive. Occasionally I have people where they just manage to scoop it right down in there and they might go through. I mean, this is like eighth of an inch at most in depth. It shouldn't be that, that big. If you do this, make sure to rewrite your initials if you have cut your initials off and your bell very, very important. Whichever way you choose to round the rim is fine, whether it is using a notched rib or sculpting it and shaving off some, just doing it by eye. There is a final thing that I can do though to really clean this up. I have a water dish here and I'm going to dip my fingers in water and I'm just smoothing with a little water on the edge, basically using my fingers as if they were little ribs. And that will really smooth it out. Also, this clay that we're using does not have grog, so I would not do this with a grogged clay, but I'm going to use a, sm a small damp sponge and then gently smooth out any of those little lines that I have in there. If you have a grogged clay that you would be using, just use your fingers. Um, but this has definitely cleaned this up real nicely. I'm ready to get this uh, just maybe a little bit drier. This is on the soft side of leather hard. I wanna get it a little bit drier for the Scraffito glaze that we'll be doing when uh, it's a, it should be a little bit drier so it, it shouldn't be sticky and I'm a little on the sticky side. Um, and also the second one will get clean and then we'll uh, dry fire so we can do the Mialica glaze. If you would like to see a more advanced version of this video, 
I have a ceramics tube video where we make pinch cups, but we add um, a foot ring, an added coil for height, and a handle. Um, that I will link in the video description if you want to see a little bit more advanced version of this basic pinch pot video. I do have one final note about clay recycling for my students. I do recycle all of this scrap clay. Um, I, I have pug mills at school, so I will be uh, recycling and pugging all of this. Now, I do have big buckets that I'll be putting around in the room for your scrap, but what you could do is just use a tray underneath the edge of your table, sweep your debris onto this, and then you can take that over to the buckets. And then I will put that right in the pug mill. Just be careful, try not to get stuff on the floor. So this is day two on how to clean your little pinch cup. You wanna make sure that it looks nice and round, even edge without denting, and that's, that's your goal. Good luck.